After a bad defeat in the Battle of Badr, the infidels of Mecca prepared an army of 3,000 soldiers and had left Mecca to attack the Muslims. Muslims also prepared an army of 1,000 companions to protect Medina. Now again, it was like the Battle of Badr, where the army of the infidels was three times more than the Muslims. Not a big deal, right? Yes. But this time, there was a young and talented boy in the army of the Meccans, whose name was Khalid. Prophet Muhammad had given the advice to fight while staying inside Medina, but most of the companions said that they should leave Medina and fight in the open desert. Prophet Muhammad left his own suggestion and accepted the suggestion of the majority. A thousand companions left Medina to fight. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi divided this army into three groups. Out of 1,000 companions, only 100 had body armor and shields, and only 50 horses. Compared to that 3,000 of Meccan army that came and stopped at Uhud, waiting for the Muslims. The center of this army was led by Abu Sufyan after Abu Jahl, Abu Jahl's son Ikrama on his left side, and 33 years old Khalid bin Walid on his right was leading with the horses. When 1,000 companions reached Uhud to fight the 3,000 soldiers of Makkah, Abdullah bin Ubay, the worst hypocrite, after seeing army of Meccans said that we will not fight. This is committing a suicide. Abdullah bin Ubay and his 300 men got separated from Muslim's army. It was a pre-planned conspiracy or whatever. Now only 700 Muslims were left and an army of 3,000 was standing in front of them. Rasulullah sent 50 archers above mountain so that the Meccans could not attack from behind the mountain. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him gave clear orders to these 50 archers that if you see that even if the Muslims had won the battle, you will not leave the mountain. And if you see that the Muslims are defeated and the birds are eating the meat of their bodies, then also you do not move from your place. A man came forward from the army of the disbelievers and challenged Muslims. Hazrat Ali finished him. Then his brother came forward and Hazrat Hamza finished him also. Then Muslims kept killing the disbelievers coming from there. Both the armies then attacked. At first the fight was a bit tough, but gradually the companions started to crush them. The people of Makkah began to lose their morale. After a short fight, like in Badr, they started running from the battlefield. It seemed clearly that Muslims had won the battle. Due to this, 41 out of 50 archers on the mountain left the mountain and went down to collect the goods. Only nine archers remained on top of mountain. Khalid bin Walid was waiting for this chance. As the 41 archers came down, Khalid led his horsemen with lightning speed and went to the backside of mountain. Now the game was completely changed. Now Muslims got stuck between two armies instead of winning the battle, and gradually many companions got martyred. And the main general of Muslims, Hazrat Hamza, was martyred by an Abyssinian slave, Washi. And to make it even worse, during the fighting between the two armies, a rumor spread there that Prophet Muhammad was also martyred, and this rumor spread because when Khalid bin Walid was attacking from behind the mountain, a group of them attacked the camp of Muhammad. At that time, there were only nine people there for the protection of Rasulullah. The battle went so far that Rasulullah's tooth was martyred. But Hazrat Talha and the rest of the companions kept him safe. When seven out of nine defenders were martyred, the disbelievers thought that they had martyred Rasulullah too, because they martyred Musab bin Umayr, whose appearance was very similar to Rasulullah. Meanwhile, the army of Muslims retreated from battlefield and went up to the mountain by protecting the messenger of Allah. After that, the formation was again made for battle at the mountain. The horses of the Meccans could not go to the mountain, and without horses, their speed would be very slow and the Muslims would shoot many arrows on them. So Abu Sufyan decided that it was enough. We will just go back to Makkah from here. Before leaving, Abu Sufyan asked Hazrat Umar whether we killed Muhammad. And Hazrat Umar said, no, he is absolutely fine and he is listening what you are saying. After that, Abu Sufyan got very angry because he did this war that Muhammad would be martyred and Medina should be captured. 
but none of these objectives were fulfilled and he went back. All the historians call this battle as a complete defeat of the Muslims. But there are some historians who say yes that the Muslims have suffered a lot, but none of Quraysh's objectives were fulfilled. The Muslims were greatly affected by this war, but the Muslims learned one thing that never go against your leader's order during battle. And then, after this, in their fight with the superpowers, they never violated any of the Muslim leaders.